A shocking new report by John Solomon in The Hill raising serious concerns about special counsel Robert Mueller's integrity over the course of his career. Mueller called to appear before a secret FISA court back in 2002, 16 years ago, to answer questions about a large number of instances in which the FBI cheated on sensitive surveillance warrant applications. Joining us tonight, Congressman Jim Jordan, ranking member of the House Oversight Committee, member of the Judiciary Committee, co-founder of the influential House Freedom Caucus. Congressman, great to have you with us. Uh, Good to be with you. First, your reaction to the president's speech last night. Yeah, great speech. I love the optimism. I like the fact he talked about American greatness, American exceptionalism, the guests he had from the greatest generation, uh, the one who survived the concentration. I, I, I thought it was, it was a well-done speech, tremendously well-delivered. And frankly, Lou, the part I liked the best was when he talked about respect for the sanctity of human life. You think about in the context, we now look at this right. in light of what took place in New York and Virginia, the fact that the President of the United States took time to talk about every single life is of value and is sacred and should be respected, I thought was especially showing what, what, a, what a great president, uh, president Trump has been. And he spoke uh, longer than any president since uh, Barack Obama some 10 years ago. And uh, it, it seemed hardly half that time, which is no, the was, test of any speech. Yeah, it was, it was, I thought, again, a great speech. But think about it. One of the reasons it took so long is think about the amazing two years we've had. Regulations reduced, taxes cut, the economy growing at unprecedented rate, lowest unemployment in 50 years, job growth in the last two months of 300,000 jobs each month, 5 million jobs created in, his, in the time he's been presidency, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh on the court, out of the Iran deal, embassy in Jerusalem, hostages home for North Korea, and a new NAFTA agreement on the way. That is an amazing record. So, of course, it's going to take some time to talk about the things that we've been able to accomplish that the president has led on that he told the American people he would do. Yeah, it's uh, by the way here, here last night, Congress, Congressman, we were scrolling his achievements, uh, and, and we got tired of scrolling. I've got to be honest with you. He said we'll get tired of winning. We'll never get tired of winning. But I was getting right. tired of scrolling. It goes on and on. He's only been in office a little over a year. No, it is incredible what he has done. That two-year record is a good term. It's a great term. It's a great four- to eight-year presidency. That has happened in two years. And here's the most telling thing. It has happened with the left trying to stop him every step of the way, with the bureaucratic left, the people in the bureaucracy trying to stop him, with the mainstream press trying to stop him, and, oh, by the way, some in the Republican establishment trying to stop him. Most, and yet most, that has all happened. That, is all, that has all been accomplished. Come on, Congressman. Most in the Republican <laughs> okay. establishment trying to stop him. Uh, by the way, uh, speaking of the Republican establishment, the deep state, Robert Mueller, John Solomon's yeah. outstanding reporting in The Hill, I mean, it goes back to 2002 with FISA warrants. Yeah. Well, Where is the man's integrity? Where in the world is the requirement for some standard of conduct on the part well, of the Department of Justice uh, in, the, in a special yeah. counsel? No, this is the great irony that, that this story is out that Bob Mueller way back when, 15 years ago, had some concerns so much so that the FISA court said, hey, you can't do it that way. Yeah. And now he's overseeing After he had an done it that way for some time. Yeah, now he's overseeing an investigation built on the faulty premise that happened in the FISA court, right. namely, Jim Comey's words, not mine, a salacious and unverified document, the dossier, was the basis for going to get the initial warrant yeah. to spy on the Trump campaign. So th th I, I just think it's the biggest irony we've seen in, in a long, long time. Two polls, if I, uh, if I may, that uh, validate the president, his agenda, uh, his performance uh, in the first two years of his eight-year presidency, I'm sure. Uh, two separate polls, CBS, CNN, both hostile to this president. They hate his guts. They prove it every night. Their polls, their snap polls showing 76 percent of viewers 70, approving yeah. of the president's State of the Union address, the other 72 percent, the highest uh, positive rating in the his, well, in, in, in the 10 year history of the uh, CNN poll. I, I mean, we're looking at some extraordinary numbers and the looks on the faces of the various cast members at both networks showed utter, I, I, that looked to me like they well, were seasick for a moment. Yeah, I mean, the American people saw the same speech you and I saw. And the American people are smart folks. They're, they got good common sense. They said, this president is leading. This president has accomplished so much in two years. And that was a great speech that he gave to the country. And he said, the state of the union is strong. And that is definitely true. 
There are two, two groups of folks I think of. Uh, one, an individual, his name is Paul Ryan. Uh, the two groups that I think of uh, are, are the Republican conference. When they look at those numbers and they listen to the president's speech last night, they have to know what fools they were not to follow this president with, yeah. with, with joy and great energy for two years instead of fighting uh, under the leadership of Speaker Ryan. Uh, no. The other group is the intelligence community of this country who think suddenly they have a uh, prerogative uh, to enter the political uh, arena with their comments uh, and their uh, contradictory uh, uh, and uh, just absolutely uh, inappropriate public contradiction of the president. Uh, yeah. Your thoughts about that? Well, uh, let me just say this. Uh, we now know that the memo Adam Schiff did, who's now the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, the memo he did a year ago, late January of last year, that was in response to Chairman Nunes' memo at the time. In that memo, he said this about Bruce Orr. He said, Republicans mischaracterize the influence of Bruce Orr and mislead on the time frame and timeline of Bruce Orr's involvement in all this. That st those statements were absolutely wrong. We now know Bruce Orr, from his testimony in the deposition that we all took, said Not these soon. three key things. He said, look, Fusion GPS is connected to the Clintons. My wife worked for Fusion GPS, and the guy they hired who wrote the dossier, Chris Steele, has a deep bias against the president. President, and he actually said he was desperate to stop Trump. He told Bruce Orr, told the FBI and key people at the Justice Department, namely Andrew Wiseman, all that information, Lou, prior to the election, more importantly, prior to the October 21st date when they went to the FISA court to get the warrant to spy on the Trump campaign. Yeah. That is huge. And Adam Schiff's memo tries to mislead everybody about that fundamental fact. Misleading, uh, but also to chairman. Uh, one, uh, Trey Gowdy of Oversight uh, and Bob Goodlot of Judiciary. Uh, they also misled the American people and they failed to bring to conclusion uh, with any effectiveness at all the investigation that was properly theirs. Uh, they, they betrayed not the party, they betrayed the country in my opinion with the awful conduct uh, and their choice to do nothing in the face of the vast political corruption of both the Department of Justice and the FBI. Your thoughts as we conclude. Well, well, uh, Lou, one of the things we're going to try to do is here in the, in the very near future, we're going to try to release every, every, all the transcripts. 14 different people we interviewed as part of this task force over the last year, from Andy McCabe all the way to Loretta Lynch and everyone in between, Bruce Orr, Lee, uh, Lisa Page, Peter Strzok, Jim Baker, all these people. We think it's important that the press, that you be able to see these transcripts, more importantly, the American people be able to see exactly what took place. We think that'll give more clarity to this crazy thing that, went, that took place at the FBI. Jim Jordan, as always, thanks for being with us, Congressman. You bet, Lou. Thank you.